10 Minute Jazz Lesson Podcast, episode 397. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the 10-Minute Jazz Lesson Podcast. This is episode 397. We're slowly closing in on 400 episodes. And of course, we're going to continue with the great jazz standard, Have You Met Miss Jones? And today, we're finally going to talk about the bridge, right? That's what you've all been waiting for. That's the hardest part of the tune. But again, what we're going to attempt to do here is really simplify it for you, make it a little bit more approachable, and give you a plan along with some materials to sort of help you along your way in learning this tune. So we've talked about the fact that Have You Met Miss Jones is A-A-B-A, but now we need to talk about the fact that the second A section is kind of like A prime, or you could call it A2, because it does have a little bit of a different exit than the first A section. All right, so if we think about the first A section, we talked about the fact that it's really all in the key of F major. We talked about a couple of things that you could do uh, to deal with that second measure and stuff. But anyway, if we are dealing with the first A section, what we have is this. And what the part I want us to really think about is this. Because what those two chords do is they spin us back around into another A section, right? We get these chords that really tell us, hey, we're going back to the key of F major. But what happens in the second A, which I'll call A2, is that we have a key change coming up when we get to the bridge, right? And that key change actually starts in the last two measures of A2. So in A2, we have this. But then we hear this. And I hope you can hear how that's different from the first A section. It's leading us somewhere else. So when we start to talk about the B, we have to realize that the B actually starts in the seventh measure of A2. Now, I have a worksheet for all of the Patreon members, so you can actually see this because I actually diagram it out for you, okay? So the first key that we are modulating to in the bridge is the key of concert B flat major. And as you'll see in your PDF, it does start in that seventh bar of A2, and then we stay in the key of B flat major for the first bar of the B. Okay. Now, here's what sort of makes this tune really cool slash kind of hard is that we modulate a whole bunch in the bridge. So let's start with the broad strokes. So we know that we're starting the bridge in the key of B flat, which is the four of where we originally started in F. We're in B flat. Then we modulate to the key of concert G flat major. Then we modulate to the key of concert D major. Then we go back to the key of G flat. And then eventually we make our way back to F. So listen to how funny those keys sound together. So if we start in the key of F, go right to the key of B flat. Then we go to G flat major, then to D major then back to G flat major, and then eventually back to F. Really interesting, isn't it? Let's think about this for a second. B flat moving to G flat major. That's the interval of a major third down. Then G flat major to the key of D major is another major third down. So we're going... Does that remind you of anything? What if I did this? A 
Oh, now that might actually bring something into your ears. It's the same chord changes as what Giant Steps is based off of. The cycle of uh, modulating down a major third. So it definitely has a Giant Steps vibe to it. And I will tell you that the keys that are a major third apart from each other, sort of tricky. They're definitely related, but... Uh, it's a tough transition to make to go from B flat major to G flat major, then all of a sudden to D major. So while I am going to simplify this for you a whole bunch, we somewhat already have, realize that this is going to take a lot of work. This is not going to be a thing that you're just going to go, oh, okay, Nick simplified it for me. It's like three major keys. I know exactly where it, where it modulates between them. Oh, this is going to be easy now. Nope, you still have to work really, really hard to be able to uh, play this bridge even in a simplified form, right? So just don't get any illusions that it's going to be easy and I'm going to give you the magic bullet. One of the first things that you could do is you could just get really good at playing in the key of concert B flat major, concert G flat major, concert D major, okay? And you, you already kind of are adept at F major if you've been practicing the stuff that I've been asking you to over the course of this month. But you might really have to familiarize yourself with some of those keys if they are uh, a little bit foreign to you or if they scare you a bit, work on those major scales and that's gonna help you a whole bunch. Now, there is a bunch of chord movement going on that's not on your sheet, right? So if we were to actually do all the chord movement starting in A2, That's actually what's going on. That's that changes. That's what I would play as a pianist, guitarist, bass player, whatever. Um, but the whole point of this, right? The whole point of what we've been talking about over the past couple of months is that it is possible to take a much more simplified approach. And actually that's very advisable to go simple and then work your way into more complicated. So here's what I want you to think about when you start playing over this. In the seventh bar of A2, you're going to start playing in the key of B flat major, okay? Then in the second bar of the B, you're going to start playing in the key of G flat major concert. You're going to play in that key for two bars. Then you're simply going to switch to the key of D major for two bars. Then you're going to go back to the key of G flat major for two more bars. And then in the last bar of the bridge, you're going to simply start playing in the key of concert F again. And that's going to lead you out uh, to that last A section. Okay. Now, if all of this sounds super confusing, uh, get in on the Patreon and get the PDF. That's how you'll see it all diagrammed out. Just talking about it in the form of audio, in the form of a podcast, I can't make it any simpler than what I just said. So if you want that visual, go ahead and grab it. We'll give you more information about that at the end. Okay. So what I have done uh, is I've prepared a backing track for you and a set of trading tracks where all we do is we loop the A2 and the B. And it actually works really, really beautifully because what we're doing is we're giving us ourselves only 16 bars uh, to practice over. So that's going to save us a lot of time if we just loop A2 into B, back into A2, back into B. And uh, again, that will be explained um, on Patreon and you will get those trading tracks along with a backing track that is just A2 and B. All right. But this is it. This is the simple answer. So three key centers, B flat major, G flat major, D major, back to G flat major, and then we make our way back to F. And if you can really do that, if you can really do that, go through those three different keys in the right place at the right time, just using a major scale, you're really going to have a head start on this tune. And it is really going to simplify things for you. So that's it. That's all I want you to work on this week is I want you to work on getting in and out of the bridge and understanding those key centers and being able to play some material over those three key centers.
nothing more. Don't worry about the two five ones if you know that they're there. Don't worry about it. Just play in the key centers, okay? So if you do want to get your hands on all this material, uh, you can go to our website, 10minutejazzlesson.com, and click on one of the Patreon banners, and you'll be able to find all of that material over on Patreon. You'll be able to download it instantly, and you'll be able to start working on this stuff, both in the form of you'll have a chord sheet, and then you will also have a uh, backing track, and you will also have those trading tracks where I'm playing through that 16-bar progression one time, and then you play on it. And that is extremely, extremely helpful. Uh, that is what I did with the majority of my teachers um, throughout all of my education, is we just played together. And this is going to be the closest we can get in this format to actually playing together. That will help you tremendously. So 10minutejazzlesson.com, click on one of the Patreon banners or patreon.com, search for the 10 Minute Jazz Lesson. Uh, quick shout out to some of our new patrons this week. Thank you to Jan, Michael, Stephen, Rob, Ken, and Becky for joining up to be a part of the 10 Minute Jazz Lesson family. I'm also putting a lot of my YouTube materials up there as well. So you're getting even an extra bonus and uh, for the cost. It's really a lot of materials and a lot of stuff to work on. Uh, and you get that good, warm, fuzzy feeling that you are supporting the podcast. All right, everybody. Let me know if you have any questions. Hope you're all staying safe and healthy out there as always. And we will talk to you next week with another episode. Have a good weekend, everyone. Bye.